So what is a PAG and how is it made? So PAGs are polymers and they are an API group five based stock. And we manufacture these from three key oxides, ethylene oxide, propylene oxide, and butylene oxide. Um, there is a large manufacturing infrastructure in place today for manufacturing ethylene oxide and propylene oxide. And we can produce some downstream derivatives of those two oxides, which we call polymers. And in our industry in lubricants, we call these PAGs, but they're used in many other industries as well, from fuel additives, personal care products. They're used in uh, paints and coatings uh, and many other applications. In fact, ethylene oxide and propylene oxide derivatives are actually very much in our homes in some of the cleaning products that we use. Uh, indeed, the seat that I'm sat on now is based on polyurethane form. But in terms of um, the EO and PO derivatives, um, we, we market those polymers as, as PAGs in, in our particular industry. There is a third oxide, 1,2-butylene oxide, and you can produce a new uh, kind of PAG with, uh, with butylene oxide that we've called oil-soluble PAGs. And maybe we talked a little bit about those, but if you compare ethylene oxide, propylene oxide, and butylene oxide from a pure chemistry point of view, you have ethylene oxide with two carbons, propylene oxide with three carbons, and butylene oxide with four. And that extra carbon in butylene oxide for me is a little diamond, and it can bring some diamond-like performance in lubricants. But maybe some purchasing managers would also say it probably brings diamond light pricing as well. Yeah, really interesting. So I think a lot of people will have heard about um, like an OSP, which you've already just alluded to as being an oil soluble PAG, right? Um, what's the difference? Presumably if we have an oil soluble PAG, that means that there are also PAGs which are not oil soluble, which is a confusing term because people think of a PAG as being an oil and yet it's not soluble in oil? You know, that's a great question, Rafe. So if you look at the lubricants industry today, there are more than a hundred different chemical families of PAGs that are used. And trying to get your head around all that is quite difficult. But what the PAG manufacturers have done, they've segmented PAGs into essentially three classes. There are the water-soluble PAGs. So these are PAGs manufactured from ethylene oxide and propylene oxide. There are the water insoluble PAGs. They're manufactured from propylene oxide, but the water insoluble PAGs are not water soluble, nor are they oil soluble. And then there are the oil soluble PAGs, which are truly oil soluble, but not water soluble. So think of those three families of PAGs when we talk about PAGs going forward. And when you say there's like hundreds of different types, are these hundreds of different types just iterations on using those three different molecules? So you had ethylene, propylene, butylene oxides, but using them in different combinations? Right, in different combinations. And maybe I can explain that a little bit more. In, in the manufacturing process, there is an initiator. It's typically an alcohol in our industry. And so what we can do is we can graft onto that alcohol an oxide, and we call those polymer polymers. But we can also produce copolymers as well, typically random copolymers where we have ethylene oxide and propylene oxide in the mixture. But not only random copolymers, we can produce block structures where we have a block of ethylene oxide or a block of propylene oxide, and then a second block of ethylene oxide or propylene oxide. So these randoms, blocks, and indeed reverse blocks, and we can change the alcohol. The alcohol can be an alcohol with just one free OH group, or maybe it's a diol with two or a triol with three. And when we look at all those many different families of polymers, they have different physical properties, they have different tribology properties, and they have different applications depending on the, the architecture of PAG. And this is why I think some people have a lot of challenges around trying to understand what PAGs are and why they're used in a very diverse range of applications. Yeah, that's interesting. So we should think of them more as like a family of different uh, molecules or compounds as opposed to being one thing. 